welcome. This is the tutorial about the R package P Uniform. My name is uh, Robbie van Aert and I am the author and also the developer of the R package uh, P Uniform. So over here you see the links to uh, the package on CRAN and also on, uh, on GitHub. And what I will do in this uh, tutorial is that I will focus on uh, two of the methods that are in the package. And the, I will focus on the methods P uniform, P uniform star. And at the end of the uh, of this tutorial, I will tell you a bit more about the other methods that are also included in the uh, package. Okay, so what the methods P uniform, P uniform star do is they are able to correct for publication bias. And publication bias it is a selective publication of studies with a statistically significant outcome. So in its most extreme case, this means that studies with a statistically significant effect size get published, and studies with a statistically non significant effect size do not get published. And there's actually quite some evidence for publication bias in the literature. So on the right-hand side of this slide, you see a figure that indicates the percentage of um, papers that report support for the tested main hypothesis uh, of a paper. So the main hypothesis that is reported in a, in a paper. And what you see is that in the last row, the psychiatry and psychology, you see that it's about 90% of the papers report support for the main hypothesis. And what we also know based on the literature is that the average statistical power is in psychology between let's say 20 and 50 percent. So these two, these, this large percentage of support for the test hypothesis on the one hand and on the other hand the low statistical power on average 20 and 50 percent these two are just not aligned with each other. And a possible reason for this is uh, publication bias. And the consequences of publication bias uh, are really severe, also for meta-analysis, because first of all, it yields overestimated effect sizes in, in the individual studies, and then also in the meta-analysis, if you are going to combine these studies. And it also yields a false impression of whether an effect exists or not, because Imagine that you as a reader are interested in a particular relationship between two variables, and all the time you see in the literature that there is a statistically significant effect, but it's only due to publication bias. And you get a false impression about the existence of such an effect. Okay, I'm going to apply the uniform uniform star method to correct for publication bias and to show you how these methods uh, work. And I do this by using an example. And this is an example about the efficacy of cognitive behavior therapy for treating pathological and problem gambling. And this is uh, data for meta analysis by Cody Shaw and colleagues. And there were two groups in these uh, studies that were synthesized in this meta analysis. One group, the experimental group, received the CBT, the cognitive behavior therapy, and there was no treatment given to the participants in the control. And this meta-analysis consists of seven uh, studies, seven standardized mean differences, where a positive effect size indicates a smaller financial loss for the experimental group. Okay, if we first take a look at the individual studies, and if you just apply also apply the random effects model by using the metaphor package and the restricted maximum likelihood estimate for the estimating between study variance. Now what we see if we first focus on the individual studies, we see that two studies overlap with this dotted line indicating that there is no statistically significant effect for these two studies. All the other studies uh, do not overlap with this uh, vertical line at zero, indicating that there is a statistically significant finding. And also, if you fit the random effects meta analysis model, we also observe a statistically significant result because it does not overlap with zero. 
and we observe an estimate of the average effect size, 52. So this indicates an effect which is about of about medium size, and we use these uh, thresholds for interpreting effect size. And if we look at the between study variance, this is estimated as zero. And if we test the null hypothesis of no heterogeneity, then the p-value is 0 0.69, so also no evidence uh, for heterogeneity. We cannot reject the null hypothesis of no heterogeneity. Okay, so now I'm going to try to explain how the p-uniform method works. And I will first do this by using an example, an example where I simulate data of studies and I do this repeatedly. So I do this for multiple studies. And then every time I compute a right tailed p-value. And the true effect size is equal to zero, which means that I'm computing p-values under the null hypothesis, I'm generating data under the null hypothesis. So let's do this. And let's generate some studies. That starts like this. So let's now pause for a moment. And then what you see is that if I have to say something about the distribution of these uh, generated right tail p values, I would say, well, they seem to be, they seem to follow a, no, a uniform distribution. It's not perfectly uniform, but they seem to start following a uniform distribution. So let's add some extra studies. And then you see the more studies uh, are generated, it's simulated uh, in the simulated data, the more these, this distribution looks like a uniform distribution. And this is used for the p-uniform method. So the p-uniform method makes use of the property that the p-values are uniformly distributed under the null hypothesis. And we also know the p-value distribution for other effect size. So if the effect size is, for instance, 0.2, then we get a right skew distribution. If the effect size is 0.5, then we get also a right skew distribution, a bit more extreme than the one for 0.2. And the opposite is actually true for negative effect sizes. So it's a left skew distribution for minus 0.2, and the distribution becomes more left skewed if you have an effect size of minus 0.5. And the p-uniform method makes use of this property for estimating the effect size. And more details or some more technical details are in these two papers. Let's apply the method to this uh, gamble example. And remember that the effect size estimate, uh, the average effect size estimate in the gamble example was about port 52. And then what we need to do, and you probably know this, we first need to install the package. So like this, with this line of code, then we need to load the package, and then we can use the p-uniform function in order to apply the method. And now what is needed? We need to um, provide some input for the argument yi. So these are the effect sizes, and these are now in the data frame dot. And we also need to provide the sampling variances, the VI, and these are also in the data frame uh, dot. And finally, we need to specify the side, and the side can be either right or left, and indicates whether significant effect sizes are in the right or the left tail of the uh, distribution. Let's have a look at the results. What we see is that the effect size estimate of the method is about 0.22, which is substantially smaller than the 0.52 uh, that we obtained with the random effects model. So in the random effects model, we had, let's say, an effect size of medium size, and now it is an effect size of small size. Over here, we get a confidence interval. This is a test for the null hypothesis of no effect. So in this case, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no effect, p-value of 0.25. And this indicates the number of statistically significant uh, studies. Over here, you see that you can also uh, get a propagation bias test based on the p-uniform method. 
with over here a test statistic, and this is a p-value uh, to test whether there is publication bias, and over here we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no uh, publication bias. And in this case, we have specified in the p uniform function, we have specified the effect size and so the sampling variance, but you could also specify, for example, the correlations together with the sample sizes, or you can specify the uh, means of two groups together with the standard deviations of two group and sample sizes, and then the uh, function itself computes for you the, uh, the effect size. There are also some drawbacks uh, of the method. That's what we realized when we worked uh, on this. And drawbacks of the method, the p-uniform method, is that it yields overestimation of effect size in case of heterogeneity in a true effect size. And it's also not an efficient method because not all available information is used. Because the method makes only use of these statistically significant effect sizes. And for that reason, we... Um, improved the method and we call this method the beautiful star method and it's an improvement because first of all it enables estimating and testing of heterogeneity in true effect size so that's an advantage and because of that it also uh, does not overestimate the effect size anymore in case of heterogeneity and the second advantage is that it takes into account significant and non-significant effect size and is therefore uh, a more efficient method makes use of all the available information. And you can apply the method by using the code uh, PUNI uh, underscore star that's also in the PUNIFORM uh, package. So if you use this function, then you need again, you need to provide the function with the effect sizes, the sampling variances of the effect sizes. And also you need to specify whether the uh, significant effect sizes are on the right or the right, the right or the left tail of the uh, distribution. Let's take a look at the output. The output looks like this of the P-Uniform star method. And what we now see over here, seven studies included, K is equal to seven, still five significant studies, of course. And we now get an effect size estimate of about 0.4, which is still quite a bit lower than the 0.52 of the random effects one. We still get a confidence interval, and we also get a test of the null hypothesis of no effect that is now still rejected, p value of 0.02. Then we can also estimate the between study variance using the method where the between study variance p uniform star is now equal to zero. This is a confidence interval of the between study variance uh, estimate. And this is a test of the null hypothesis of no heterogeneity. And remember that also in the random effects model, the between study variance was estimated as equal to zero. So the same as with the p uniform star uh, method. So to conclude regarding this example, the effect size and the average effect size was considerably smaller when we used the beautiful beautiful star method so when we corrected for uh, publication bias but the null hypothesis of no effect was rejected with p uniform star but not with the p uniform uh, method so there seems to be evidence of uh, publication bias over here with quite a bit lower effect sizes So we developed some uh, web, app web applications uh, for the P uniform, P uniform star uh, method, uh, methods. And uh, the reason for this is that uh, some users might not be familiar with R and therefore it would be more uh, straightforward for them to use these uh, web applications. So that's why we also have implemented the methods in these uh, web applications. And for future uh, developments, uh, we have in mind to um, extend the methods such that uh, the p uniform star method, for example, do, does not only draw a distinction between, on the one hand, significant studies, and on the other hand, 
non-significant studies, because currently the method only draws this distinction and treats only significant and non-significant studies differently. But to extend this to more intervals, so you can, for example, imagine that also the probability of uh, publishing a study, that this is different for, for example, a study that's positive compared to a study that's negative. This is something that could also be included in the method. And we are already uh, working on um, the inclusion of moderators in the uh, model. So to also correct for publication bias if you're interested in the effects of uh, moderators in a meta-analysis. So this was only uh, yeah, a, a very small part of the functionality of the package. There are also other methods uh, included. So there are, for example, two methods included to meta-analyze an original study and a replication study. And what the methods do is they take into account that there is likely bias in the original study, but not in the replication study. And then they combine these by means of a meta-analysis. So there is a frequentist method, which is called the hybrid me method of meta-analysis. That's the hybrid function in the package. And we have a Bayesian method that computes posterior model probabilities for different effect sizes. And this method is called the snapshot Bayesian hybrid uh, meta-analysis method. And you can use this method using the snapshot uh, function. Now we've also created uh, a plot, a plot that's called the meta plot. And this plot is actually, um, can be used instead of a furrow plot and is based on cumulative meta analyses. And finally, we have also some functions in the package to correct for outcome reporting bias using this uh, corp uh, method. So that's it, that's a small uh, yeah, illustration of what you can do with, uh, with the package. So I would like to thank you for your attention. Over here are the links to the uh, package, so CRAN over here and over here on uh, GitHub. And here is an overview of the references uh, that I used during the, the presentation. And most of this work on uh, especially on the PM4 PM4 star method is together with my colleague uh, Marcel Vlas also from uh, Tilburg University. So thank you for your attention.